Hello, this is Victoria Wynn. So in this video, number two, I'm going to show you exactly how I paint this three panel natural birch wood. It's called Nature's Kiss and it comes like this. The woman, the man, and then I really, really love how they um, are like roots intertwining into each other. Um, this just seems like such a special piece. Um, so I'm feeling a little nervous about painting on it because it's honestly, it's so beautiful um, as it is. <laughs> so I'm taking a deep breath and, um, and here we go. I'll tell you the plan real quickly, just as um, a quick overview. I've already painted this um, large canvas. It uh, goes from ombre black to grays to creams and little touches of white um, with a marbling of gold. So the plan is to be very careful. These are so like intricately cut like the last thing i want to do is get too rough with these um so what i'll be doing is the way that this is doing a dark ombre on the top like with the black i'm going to do everything the opposite on this uh the three panel wood piece nature's kiss this is found on windmodernart.com um, i'm getting a lot of questions about it so windmodernart.com it's called nature's kiss and so I will be painting black ombre, you know, to the gray and then to the gold. So it's kind of a mirror effect. It's gonna be the opposite of the painting behind it. Boy, we, <laughs> I've, I am thinking it's going to be stunning, but who knows, it's all in my head. So let's see how this goes. Okay, first things first, is again I'm moving these oh so carefully there we go I'll set this one aside only because I didn't have a, a tray handy um, actually to put them all in one tray but this one can have its own tray right here there we go this is just black acrylic paint and I've shown you guys before, like my little uh, um, little caddy that I keep nearby to keep me organized and not stressing out while I'm painting. Because we really, you know, life is too crazy right now. This world is too crazy right now. We, we don't need to make our art time crazy. So just white, black, and then... This is called 24K. It's a luxe metallic powder on windmodernart.com. Our powders and all of our embellishments are, are developed for resin and acrylic artists, also alcohol ink artists. I just had a thought. I'm noticing this is black, that's white, but my piece kind of has a cream color to it. So... Hold on, I gotta think this through for a second. I'm really glad I'm catching this right now. All right, I'm gonna move these two pieces over here because it uh, looks like I need to have a last minute color mixing session here. And thankfully, I've got some gold sitting here. Let's see, let's take a look. Okay, well that was not my wisest choice. I had I got dry paint on my in my white paint. Whoops, um, dried gold paint flecks and other blue paint flecks. Okay, I got that out. I have the handy dandy baby wipes nearby to fix my messy mistakes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is. Um, just put a touch of this this paint is like a champagne colored um pigment also acrylic 
because we've got to tone down our white just a touch. Let's see how that goes. Also, so when I'm painting and I'm not talking through it out loud, um, I'm kind of going over my head a bit of the plan. So in this case, um, let's see, the bottom, so where the roots are, it's going to be dark, it's going to be the black, and I really need to make sure <laughs> that uh, I do that, not forget that the bottom of the three panels are going to be the black, because it's the opposite of the painting. Okay, Vic, let's remember that. All right, this is much better. It's uh, not that bright white. I'm going to actually start with the lighter color on top. And I think that's gonna be our best bet here. And I'm really, I'm just gonna, just gonna get to it. <laughs> Enough talk. It's time to just get to it. I will be sprinkling um, the 24K powder on the very, very top. But first, let me just get my base, my base color of this like creamy white. So the reason I really like this sponge brush for this project is because of all the intricacy all the grooves um, and detailed cuts and this gorgeous cutout piece of Baltic birch. Um, our wood is also used for creating um, for boats. So it's really quite lovely. I'm really, really happy with it. The quality matters so much to us. I'm going to move on to the panel that goes on the far right. This is the guy's hair. Um, again, the sponge will also make it so we don't have all these brush strokes. So there's just a lot of reasons to use a sponge brush at times. Also, um, these were, gosh, five to a pack, I think it was, at a dollar store. So that was a screaming deal. Okay, I'm just gonna match these up a bit. So this is how it's actually gonna be hung um, or ad adhered to canvas piece so I just want to um, just do a little gauging make sure that we've got it got my cream um, kind of go into the, the same spot okay I'm going to take a deep breath again because <laughs> adding the black that is some tricky stuff or can be or maybe I'm just in my head about it and it's not a big deal. <laughs> that is a possibility. So it's supposed to be an ombre. Remember, I need to, I want to keep this lined up right here, not all the way to the top, but right here. So I'm gonna have to kind of hold this together, I'm thinking. All right, let's just jump into it. Again, Vic, stop talking. On quiet because I don't want to mess up. <laughs> it's because I'm deeply focusing. Okay. We're lined up pretty well, I think, with the with where I wanted this other piece. I'm gonna carefully put my fingers on the edges. I can touch up later. Not too worried about that. Um, I do want to be worried though about getting paint 
on uh, my fingers and then touching a different spot. So whatever you use to quickly clean your hands, keep it nearby. Even if you're wearing gloves, you're still gonna be getting your paint in the wrong places, so be careful. I mean, really all in all, this is a very simple project. Um, I think the big issue, honestly, is just being mindful of things like fingerprints and, um, yeah, mostly fingerprints. Okay, so to do the ombre here, I'm gonna dab some of this sponge just right here on my paper towel beneath. And again, I'm getting my fingers really messy. So really be mindful about the fingers and about lining up how you want to hang this. So we're kind of doing a spongy. I'll dip a little into the cream. We're doing a little spongy ombre here. And I have not forgotten about the guy to my far right over here. We'll get we'll get there. And look, again, <laughs> it is so easy to be messy especially for me. Okay, I am gonna pick this up and show it to you though, because it's really looking beautiful, but I would imagine on silver, maybe it's a little hard to see. We set this over here and show you how it's looking so far. Um, how can I better show this to you? coming together. It's looking just like that painting, but just backwards. I'm loving that. Yay. Okay. All right. I think this is looking pretty well. So I think we're going to move on to the man's um, hair and all the roots over there. I'm cleaning my hands again. Um, it's just, there's very few things that are so frustrating as ha being so happy with your piece and then let's say I touch the black by accident and then I go and put it right onto white or cream. That is not easy to fix. <laughs> Anytime you get a dark pigment, pigment and go and um, put it onto white it's just kind of a nightmare it's really hard to fix so this brush since i used it for my ombre uh, it's not a true black anymore so i'm going to get a new sorry I, I said brush i meant sponge so i'm going to get a new sponge here and i don't want that one to contaminate the black look that i'm going for on the very bottom because we're not doing the ombre till we get right here. This is super quick, easy to do. Again, I've got a little bit of black on my fingers. <laughs> clean off, clean off. Oh my. So I'm really, really excited to see what everybody else is going to be doing with their um, the other wood pieces of wood art that we have um, there's a six layered Japanese wave um, there's this one called nature's kiss there's fairy doors fairy bridges there's so much um, and I'm really excited to see what Will all of you create? Are you gonna leave it raw wood and then just hang it, you know, and frame it 
so beautifully. Um, excited to be seeing everybody's creations. Okay, these two are looking really good together, meaning my ombre is going just where I want it. Now I gotta work on this. So what I'll do is I will, first of all, get that out of my hand. I'm gonna move uh, the girl's hair, set it aside, because I need to make room for making sure that he aligns well like this. Remember, I'm hanging it a little bit um, off centered like that. So that's how I need to do the ombre. Cleaning my hands again. Um, this is the black, so I'm gonna grab the brush that it's got, ooh, there we go. That has the, the ombre I had done and I'm just gonna kind of line it up and sort of match up to his um, profile right here. Really the most complicated part to this is just making sure you're mindful about where your hands are going, your fingerprints and just be really, really delicate when you're doing the ombre part to it. Like tapping, and I mean tapping and delicately, really delicately. And when you do that, your colors are gonna blend so beautifully. Okay. I'm really loving this. I'm gonna set, um, you know, I'm a big proponent of clearing off your workspace. So now I'm going to start getting into using the metallic powders. So I'm going to move my paint out of the way, my sponges out of the way, everything out of the way, except for the baby wipes. <laughs> um, so let's figure out the best way to adhere our sparkle. First of all, I think I'm gonna move the paper towel so whatever I use doesn't stick my, my wood um, onto the towel. That's why I love these like aluminum trays because I can get things to, you know, I don't have paper towels sticking to the back of my beautiful piece of art. Let's see, so one of my tricks that I did yesterday, I think I'm gonna do it again. Um, when I created this, the six layered Japanese wave, one of my layers is Sinatra powder. The whole layer is Sinatra powder. And the way I did that is I used nail polish to be my adherent. Just straight up dollar store nail polish. Um, it was so like sticky and it dried so fast. So I've got the nail polish sitting there. I'll open up a package of the 24K. This is a Luxe Metallic Powder. It does not have a color shift. So what you see is exactly um, what it looks like when I add it to my art. And I'm just looking for a little bowl or a lid to pour it in. Here we go. I'm guessing we're not gonna need a whole lot, but there it is. Oh, it's beautiful. but I like to have a little extra set out. That way I'm not panicking in the middle of painting, nail polishing. Okay, oh, I gotta take another deep breath. <laughs> oh my. Like this is such an, an ornate piece. It's so intricate. It took so long um, to get this 
to have this thing, you know, cut so beautifully that, uh, and it's on such quality wood that I'm just trying to not get in my head about it because my little brain wants to be like, don't mess up. <laughs> I'm like, I know, <laughs> I know, I know, leave me alone. I'm like having arguments with myself. So I'm gonna ombre the gold as well. I am actually thinking um, the best way to do this. I don't like the idea of nail polish on my hands, but also have my baby wipes. I'm putting it on my hands because I need to do this so quickly. I don't have time to be screwing around with my sponge brush that, you know, um, it's, it can be a little bit difficult to adhere or to use the nail polish with the sponge. Okay, here we go. Make sure you don't do it over your other piece of art because that is not the goal. We want to be very particular where we're sprinkling. So what I want to do is even ombre the metallic patterns. So I'll put a whole bunch up here, but then the closer I get to the colors changing to the darker colors, then I'm just flicking a bit. Let me show you what it looks like. So you can see it's looking like the painting. Okay, I'm gonna set this down right here and I'm gonna clean my hands from nail polish. And now I'm gonna start on the other one. Okay, here we go. See if I can at least just pour. Whoa, I want to show you, but then I realized I could drip onto the painting beneath. How about I don't do that? Oh, it's so gross. Nail polish on skin. It's like the opposite of what you want in life. Go ahead and add it to something else. It's really quite gross. Um, you just use clear. If you're not going to use clear, then at least have a nail polish that is just like a little gold speck or some speckle, you know, just fleck, I guess. Um, it's just what they had. So uh, clear would be great too, because we're getting our gold, not from the nail polish, but from the metallic powders. Flick a little to get our ombre, our ombre look. And I'll show you this one. Oh, it's beautiful. Now we're just gonna do the same thing. Panel number three, here we come. All right, more nail polish. <laughs> Clean off my hands again. And uh, let's do our last panel. So I'm so curious to hear what all of you are thinking about this idea. I know it's a bit out of the box as far as the, you know, getting a painting that's already dry, um, already painted, and then going and creating something that's the mirror image of the painting, you know, in the background 
Um, so a level of one to 10, you know, how crazy of an artist am I? Seriously, don't even need to answer that. I already know <laughs> my ranking is very, very high up <laughs> as to the level of crazy artist that I am. All right. Here we go. Let's show you like this. Remember at the top, this is where I really want the thicker layer of it. And then as I get close lower down, then I'm just going to start doing the little sprinkling, flicking. But we are doing the whole purpose for me was to do um, to have this creation that's black that shifts to like a light grayish cream that shifts to gold. So that's what I'm going for. Let's show you this one. See how it looks. Here we go. Whoa, easy Vic. <laughs> careful, careful. There we go. That was so easy. Okay, set that down and so I think the only thing that I might do is make the bottom a little more black. Um, there was some Floetrol in my, in this, um, so it made it, you know, kind of watered down. Not not that it technically had water in it, it's just flow trial. But if there was something that I was gonna do to um, alter my wood nature's kiss piece, it would probably be to go and just darken the roots here at the bottom. So if I were you, I would wait before setting it on your piece of art. Because as you can see, as I'm just dabbing a bit, I see some of that nail polish coming off. Um, but for the sake of an epic video, <laughs> I'm gonna put it onto my painting right now. I am gonna dab on this um, paper towel for a second and very carefully, again, super ornate and intricate. But I want to dab off any paint excess, nail polish excess, and uh, so we can see it all together. Okay. Because I don't want to get nail polish or paint on my painting. Let's see how big that painting is, actually. Whoops, sorry, that might have been loud to you guys. <laughs> All right, I'm clearing off my workspace again because I'm bringing out, you know, this big, big, big piece of um, amazing canvas art. And I want to clear off the area here. So far, I'm pretty happy. And I can be a picky little poo about my art, to put it mildly. Let me recovering perfectionist. Barely recovered. Okay. So. Let's measure. Let's see what we're dealing with here. This piece is three feet, so 36 inches by two feet, so 24 inches. It's a three by two, and then its thickness is, it's like about one and a half. I'm gonna show you, so this is a, quite a large 
piece of art. Here's the mess behind the scenes. Like, I like to be real about things, so let's, let me just show you. Um, I've got baby wipe <laughs> scraps. I've got metallic powders sitting out. I've got Huggies, I've got a mask, and I've got a frozen mocha. <laughs> there we go. And this is what the rest of the room is looking like over there. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Taking a deep breath. Let's put this thing together. Nature's kiss. Found on windmodernart.com. I'm going to center as best I can, but I will get out the ruler or the tape measure. So what I'm doing, I'm placing it all down right now, and then if I need to pick up the pieces and go back, um, you know, darken any areas, or maybe some areas didn't quite get as much gold as I might have wanted, then I'll just pull, take it off, and I'm not going to glue it until I'm really happy with it. But I do want to take a look. I see that there's a little bit of gold that I want to work on. This worked out pretty well. What a really crazy idea of mine, but I think I'm happy with it. Like that is, that is quite stunning. So when you get your, your panels, you know, you can take the time to see how far apart you might want them, you know, what looks best to you. And again, this is a two foot by three foot canvas. And then I painted the canvas. It's completely dry. And then I'll adhere the wood panels with, um, I'll use Lux Water Effects because, man, I, because I've stuck so many things by accident um, using Lux Water Effects. It's a really, really shiny and lovely um, top coat. I also create my waves, like this whole piece I created, but turns out it's extremely sticky. <laughs> so I'm gonna use it to adhere this beautiful piece. Oh, I'm so happy. I will go in and just touch up some of my gold or maybe darken, um, just so the very bottom tips a little bit are a little more jet black, but it's a it's a 20 minute, a 20 minute thing to do, and that's it. I'll give you a little close-up so you can see the, the gold. The Lux powder is so beautiful. I'm so so happy. Well, there you have it. Thank you, thank you for joining me. I would love to hear your thoughts and would love to see your artwork um, when using our Lux powders, our Lux embellishments, and our wooden um, cutouts and all the fun things that we've got going at Win Modern Art right now. This is Victoria Wynn. so appreciative of all of you when modernart.com for nature's kiss when these pieces are all together they're approximately 17 inches wide and approximately 11 inches tall when they are all tight together you obviously can move them around until your heart's content until you're happy just like i am Thanks, guys.